you're watching the 5 Minute Bark Podcast on YouTube. If you like this episode, you just may like many more. Subscribe today by clicking the red subscribe button in the top right hand corner. And we are back on the 5 Minute Bark Podcast today, and we have Jarek Robbins here today, and I was encouraged highly by her beautiful girl named Sandy Sanders. She reached out and said, listen, you have to uh, interview Jarek. He's amazing. So she brought me to your live video on Facebook, and she was showing me such great things you're doing here today. So Jarek, why don't you say hello to everybody out there? What's up, everyone? Hopefully you're having a great day. Good to be here with you all in your ears. Yes, we are really excited to have you on the show here today. Um, as you know, uh, we're at over 130 episodes now, and we're really out to inspire people. And, you know, I, I have to say I was really enjoying your video that you did the other day. It was really em- empowering and exciting. Uh, you did another one. I think after that, I didn't get a chance to catch that. But what are some of the things you focus on um, in inspiring people? Sure. It, it's it's really simple. Uh, we do those daily. Every day, right around, right around 5 30 6 o'clock every Eastern time. single day every day that's the goal um now that is the goal not always life and reality yeah yeah <laughs> uh, i was telling you before we started we're getting ready to do michigan chicago la san diego nevada all in the next seven days um so as much as i try to hit that time period every day sometimes due to travels and planes and all kinds of awesomeness uh we miss those but my goal every day is to pump one of those out and 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 the the true goal with that is i'm just listening to what people are struggling with i'm watching Mm. facebook comments i'm watching feeds i'm watching what they're up to i'm listening to our own personal clients that we work with and, and i'm just seeing consistent little things that pop up in their life in their business in their health and so i jump on there for a half hour each day and just riff on it and, and, and break it down and show people exactly what it takes to get over whatever it is they're focused on. So each day is a different topic. Um, and it ranges between political correctness and how do you <laughs> how do you face that conversation when someone brings up something and you have very, very different opinion than them. Mm-hmm. Um, understanding how to overcome adversity with, with understanding the levels of consciousness and spiral dynamics, how they went into South Africa and ended apartheid with that and how you can use that in your understanding of other human beings around you to better communicate with them in your own office, in your business, with your clients, with your family, um, all the way that to how to build powerful daily habits, um, simple stuff that can literally change people's lives. If you looked for a theme, if you step back 100 feet and just said, okay, what's the consistent theme behind all this? Uh, it's really simple, helping people be the happiest, healthiest, most fulfilled version of themselves. You know what, Jared, I mean, I can see already in the passion. I mean, I, I always kind of gauge people. We do video, and uh, I can gauge people by their intensity and their, their interest in what you're doing. And you're definitely passionate about what you're doing. And it's, you know, what specific things, like, for example, I was telling you I was doing uh, an interview with Sean Stevens before, and he wants to rid the world of insecurity. Sure. What's your purpose? In- um, to reach people when th- that need us when they need us most it's really simple the, every day when I jump on there people I have uh, marketing experts reach out to me all the time which yeah. I'm sure everyone does and they always ask me well why is your page so small why aren't you reach why do you only have 11,000 people following you and I said listen as much as my goal is to reach a billion people and I think that would be freaking awesome to do right uh, my real goal every day is to reach the person that needs to hear that message and if it happens to be one uh, I'm good with that yeah. as long as they get it and that focus has given us the ability to reach people at some of the most challenging moments of their life, some of the most victorious moments of their life. Uh, I mean, one of our, our books went out there and, and Retch, a, a lady who was in the service who happened to be deployed, came back, had post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, forgot her reason to live. Uh, she wrote in a letter to us and said, multiple times since being home, I've had my firearm in my mouth and ready to pull the trigger because I couldn't even think of why I'm even here any longer. Uh, I read your book. I happen to jump online, follow you on, on Facebook, listen to what you're saying. I bought one of your little courses, went through, and I just wanted to say thank you because an exercise in chapter one of your book helped me remember my, my purpose and my reason to be living. And I no longer want to kill myself, and I'm actually doing great and just want to say thanks for that. Isn't that powerful? I'm, I, I just, um, and I, I, I can relate to this excitement of this because I obviously have a podcast, and it's been very passionate, yep. the inspirational podcast, and you know, those days when I'm like, man, you know, it's just uh, 
a lot of work building a podcast. It's a lot of work um, doing what we do. And then I get this message that's similar to what you're talking about. Like Dennis, you just made my day. It's like you, you gave me the, the ingredients to get through this day or to get motivated and so on and so forth. And it just, <laughs> somehow it comes the right time in the right place because they're, they're feeding us and we're feeding each other in this world. And it's a really, really powerful, impactful thing uh, to be doing that. But what, I mean, I like to really try to get into what, what specific day and time do you say, this is my purpose, you know? Sure. Um, is there, I, I is there a specific day and time or? No. Okay. It, 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 it's a, it's a rolling thing. Okay. Uh, there's developmental stages that every person goes through. If you took a man's life specifically, it's slightly different than a woman's. Yep. Um, and, and if you look at a young man between the ages of, let's say 13 to 30, uh, his whole life's purpose is about proving to himself what he's capable of. Mm-hmm. And, and some young men never grow out of this. You meet 75 year old knights who constantly are trying to prove to themselves what they're capable of. Uh, and that's awesome. Good for them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and some guys start to evolve right around 30 years old and they look for something that's worth investing their life into. Yeah. So I, I'm guessing this podcast is something that if I were to ask you, is this worth investing your life into? you'd probably step back and go, of course it is because of the following reasons. Yes. And, and all that means is you've transitioned between trying to prove to yourself what's possible. And it's not about how many, uh, you know, how many listeners can I get and how much money can I make off this? And, and is that possible? And, mm-hmm. and there's a group of people who that's all that podcasting mm-hmm. or coaching mm-hmm. or training or teaching or business or selling widgets is all about. They just want to know what the peak of the mountain feels like. Yeah. Now, the truth is we've helped young guys do that at that stage of life. They've peaked out, made $100,000, like never made more than 50 grand in a year. We help them make $100,000 in a month. Radically not normal results, but that's an extraordinary result. And the next month they're depressed, sitting by themselves, not knowing what the hell to do with their life. Yeah, yeah it's true. It's like, cause <laughs> you, 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 get, you scratch your head and you're like, what the heck is next? Like yes. I thought money was the key. I have all this freaking money. It didn't fix it. <laughs> no, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't fix it because we have to have a purpose. And we have to have um, the people around us that that curate us as human beings. You know, it's just yep. uh, a very important, very, very, very important thing. And, and that's this. Not to interrupt you, but that's this stage of life. We're mm-hmm. in the same stage of life. If, yeah. if I were to guess our ages, yeah, I, I think you're, I'm 48. Perfect. Yeah. So you're, you're right at the end of this stage of life. Yeah, uh, I'll give you a heads up. The next thing that's going to happen is you'll feel as if you've made it at some point. Like I've done what I'm supposed to do on this planet. I'm good. Um, I don't know if you've hit that already. Or if you're getting close, I um, you know, I, I've been a professional athlete for most of my life, and I went and had a business or two, and and enjoyed that. And uh, but this is this is nothing of what I would expect it to be. Podcasting, and I'm sure you can probably resonate with this. It's just. Yeah the amount of connections I've made with human beings. And I'm, I, and I'm, and I'm just meaning like connections. Uh, uh, it's just personal connections. We, I mean, before this podcast happened today, I've texted with or messaged with four or five different, you know, uh, other guests like, yeah, go get it today. Have fun, you know, because this is one of my most powerful days here. I'm Sean Stevenson and yourself here today and my other uh, guest that's coming on soon. It's just pretty powerful to be able to two, three guests in one day and to be able to, speak with them. And the, and the whole thing is I have to pay attention to Jarek. I have to pay attention to Sean. I have to make sure that they give their best because they're giving my time to, you know, their time to me. You, you have time and, and you only have so much of it. And if they're going to give me my time, which is, I believe, thank you so much for doing, I have to be at my best. And I have to show up. I have to be prepared. I have to be mentally um, connecting with this person to get the best out of it for not only you and my, my listeners. So I, I, I feel that that's an amazing gift I've been given is to be able to listen to people, right? To listen to people and talk to them. Uh, we're all so busy grabbing the phone, trying to get to the next place that we're not at right now, right? We're at right here, right now. I'm with Jarek here and we're talking on a podcast. Everything else out there doesn't really matter right now. And, and what's interesting, right here, right now, if you think about that, that's this stage of life is maximizing this opportunity and, and at some point you're going to feel as if you, you've peaked or you've hit what you were here to do and, and you're just living true to it. And it's like, oh, I did it. Your chest, your chest will puff up six inches further than it's ever been. <laughs> uh, just so you know, um, most people will find you incredibly attractive at that moment of your life because yeah. that, that confidence will just exude out of every pore of who you are. Uh, and, and then inevitably what happens and, and right around 50, 55, somewhere in that stage, most men go through the next stage. We call it different things around the world, but I've heard it referred to as the tunnel where a man will look himself in the mirror and say, was it worth it? Is everything I've done with the past 25, 30 years of my life worth it? Does it even matter? Does it matter to me? Does it matter to the people around me? 
was it, you know, what did it add up to? And it's almost like you take a needle and you're like, and like all that confidence disappears. And for some people, they stay in this tunnel for like six weeks. For some people, it's like six months. Um, some people, it's longer. But it, it's this re-understanding of self that exists there. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's just constant questioning. If, you're, if you happen to be a spouse of someone who's in this place or a good friend, they need a sounding board. They mm-hmm. need someone to bounce ideas off of because they're rediscovering self at this moment. And eventually, when they do pop out six weeks, six months, six years later, it's different for different people. Um, they, they evolve into a place where they will have defined the one and only thing they feel they're here on this planet to give. And whether that's love, money, smiles, hugs. Um, my grandfather, it, it, he believes he's here to enroll people into Christianity, which is awesome. I give him a high five all the time. And you could only imagine if you know someone at this stage of life, what tends to happen is when their gift is valued, they're the center of the room. They light up the whole party. They talk to everybody. Everyone's engaged. It's the most amazing thing you've ever seen. If they're ever sitting or standing in a room where they feel their gift is not valued, it's like that old man sitting in the corner saying nothing to anyone, just quietly sitting there, just being alone because they don't feel that their gift is of any value or appreciated Mm -hmm. in this room. So I always tell people, if you have someone like this at this stage of life, figure out what they believe their gift is and acknowledge them for it and watch how you light this man up like a Christmas tree. And it's amazing what happens. It's amazing. You bring a human being to life just because you say, oh, grandpa, tell me about that for the 105th time. But please tell (laughs) Tell me me. about it. (laughs) You don't say the 105th time. That'd be (laughs) insulting. But you say, tell me about it. Oh, man, really? You want to know? And he'll go on for freaking days Days. telling you about this because it's it's what he feels his purpose is. So what's fascinating, that question you brought up a few times is what's that purpose? Right now, it's investing my life into projects and people and things that matter, things that I feel are worth investing life into. I could tell you later in life, it's going to be different. Mm-hmm. Um, I guarantee there'll be a tunnel. I'm, I'm 32, so I'm way off the tunnel. Right, right, right. <laughs> but I know it's out there. And at some point, I'll question everything I've ever done in my entire life. Right. Uh, and eventually, I'm going to hit that stage where I wake up one day and go, wow, I really honestly believe. And, and if you've ever sat with an older man and he turns on television and he literally flips through 427 channels, sets the clicker down and says, there's nothing on. All that means is... There's nothing that correlates with what I feel my life's purpose is right now. Therefore, there's nothing worth even giving a moment of my time to. Yes. And that's how they feel. Like they only want to do the same stuff again and again and again because that's what they feel their purpose is. And and, and so I think I'm a little far off from that moment of life as of now. Yeah. And and so I I believe at some point I'll discover that. But right now, my my real true purpose, if you're going to ask it, is, is investing life into things that I feel matter. Only because I've already peaked out at that younger stage of life. It was at one point about just proving to myself what's possible. Mm-hmm. Was it building a business? Was it getting a date with that special someone? Was it taking that trip around the world? Was it traveling to all the countries I could come up with? Was it climbing every mountain I could find? But pretty soon after climbing all those mountains, you get to the peak, you look around, you're like, all there is a thinner, nice view. Yeah. Uh, and it's pretty much the same. I mean, it's different, but thin air and nice view exists on Mount Fuji. Um, you know, every mountain of those Mount mm-hmm. Everest, like most people die cl- trying, uh, but every other mountain kind of feels the same. Yeah. And, yeah. and that analogy holds true in just about every guy's life. There's always an Everest, someone, something, some dream they've always thought of, but they feel like they might die on the journey if they try. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I felt like that a few times in my life. It's like, you're just going for it, going for it. And you're giving all your exhaustion, all your emotions, all your time, all your... And, um, this podcast being one of them is, but, uh, the, the breakthrough moment that we get and we get to the place we want to be, that is that adrenaline, that feeling that stimulates the blood and makes us uh, want to be who we are. And, um, yeah, I feel blessed and obviously you feel blessed too as well. And, yeah. um, so going back to more of you, cause that's who we're, um, talking about here today, learn, I see this thing, le- learn it, live it, give it. What's this all about? Oh, face. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Here, let me. Boom. There you go. Oh, a we got options. We got options. There you go. <laughs> I'll, go I'll go back to learn and live again. So, so learn and live again. It, it's a simple philosophy, and and I, I, I try to step back. I grew up in the personal development world. My godfather co-created NLP. 
Um, my mom was teaching people how to break through their fears by breaking bricks with their bare hand when I was in her belly. So I always say through osmosis, I had to pick something up along the way. Yeah. Um, but, but in all honesty, growing up around all the alternative forms of healing and transformation and all this great stuff, there's lots of tools out there. And I went and got my BA in psychology from the University of San Diego. And I, and I learned the traditional foundation of behavioral approach and psycho, you know, cognitive psychology and experimental psychology and like how this goes into the human psyche and all the different ways you can go about helping someone. I had a brief stint where I did uh, you know, some side study with a lady who's one of the top world-renowned psychotherapists in marriage and family therapy. And, and when you mix all this stuff together, um, you, you start to understand that, that there's a lot of tools out there people can get access to. And the real tricky part that I see happen is there's a lot of people who go out there, they get excited, and, and the very first step, if I were to give you three steps on how to do it, they, they, they get hungry to figure out what works. And whether that's a transformation in their health they're looking for, a transformation emotionally, a transformation in their relationships, a transformation uh, in their business, a transformation in their finances or spiritual life, there, there's some transformation. They're like, I don't like the way it is. I think there's a way to make it better. And at that moment, they go on their hunt for the very first kind of step, which is figuring out what the heck works. And so you read books, you attend seminars, you read websites, you watch YouTube videos. I mean, you listen to podcasts like this. You gather every ounce of information you could possibly get your hands on, hoping that something works. Um, now, for some people, you're brave enough to actually try it, and you figure out, hey, something works. I figured out how to get healthy. I figured out how to create abs. I figured out how to lose belly fat. I figured out how to make money. I figured out how to build a business or serve clients or travel the world on a budget or whatever you figured out, you're like, this works. Um, the, the truth is, no matter what works that you learn from someone else, after so long, you have to figure out how to adapt it and make it your own. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it feels very inauthentic after so long because you're like, yeah, that's their thing that they do. And I know it works, but it's like, oh, I don't want to do it their way anymore. Mm. And so there's this piece of authenticity that exists in a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people where they want their own authentic version to shine through at some point. So the second step is not only what works, you got to adapt what works for you, you as an individual. And eventually, once you figure that out, now you got to go to someone like Charles Duhigg who talks about the power of habit. He breaks down habit into three things, a trigger, a routine, and a reward. And you got to say, okay, what's the trigger that'll set this off? What's the exact routine I want to go through every day? And what reward can I give myself? And how do I cognitively and emotionally, and more this is behavioral psychology, how do I literally ingrain this into my nervous system until this habit and routine becomes biologically part of who I am? Uh, and you hear stuff from psychology, um, like neurons that fire together, wire together. And all that means is the more you do something, you build more nylon sheath around the neurons, which creates a stronger receptin that the more times you do it, the better you get at it. Um, according to Duke University, 40% of what we do every day is nothing more than a cognitive uh, routine that's been built into our, our cognition and our body. And therefore, we don't even consciously think about 40% of what we're doing all day. What you eat, how you dress, what you go to. One of my favorite topics to throw out there, just as an example, for anyone who works a nine to five job at an office, if, you, if you, every morning you get dressed, you get in your car, you drive the same way, take the same exit, get off on the same road, park in the same spot, and you do it every day for two, you know, 20 days, 50 days, all of a sudden one day on a non-work day, you get in your car, you start driving, you kind of blank out, and all of a sudden you pull into a spot, you look up, and you're like, why the heck am I at work? It's Saturday. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever done this. I've Most done that kind of have. stuff um, a lot. <laughs> and all that, all that happened was your brain went into autopilot. You became unconscious of what you were doing. You're still aware, but you're just not thinking about it cognitively. And your body went into autopilot and pulled you right into your spot. And what's funny is you normally, most people look around and go, oh, shit, and slowly back out of the spot. To make sure no one's solved because they're not supposed to be there. Uh, but the truth is your body does that 40% of your entire day without you realizing it. Now, big wild question, it, if hopefully it's one of these things that works that you've built into autopilot. I hate to say it, but you know, scientific research shows we have 60,000 thoughts a day. 95% of those thoughts are the same day to day and 80% are negative. That means only 20% of our thoughts are positive. That means for most people, we haven't done a heck of a good job at building in those automatic positive thoughts. We haven't done a good job at building automatic, healthy activities we do every day. We haven't done a good job at building great, powerful relationship habits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. How, I mean, God, you know a lot. <laughs> yeah. 
You've been, I've been around the block a couple uh, times. Yeah, you have. You're, so, I mean, so I'm, I'm like, you're real getting, quick, to, to yeah, sum up ahead. the whole learn it, live it, give it thought process, Yes, that's the whole process. Well, number one, learn what it takes to have the results you want. Learn what works. You know, Two is live it. Live it. Apply it. Figure out not only what works, but what works for you. What's your unique formula for the results? How do you build those powerful habits? What feels good? What feels right for your nervous system, your DNA? And finally, give it. Once you've built it in, it's an automatic habit in your life. You're happy, healthy, fulfilled. You're abundant. You're overflowing with awesomeness. At that point, find a way to pay it forward and show others an option of what works. I don't believe in the five golden pillars that everyone must follow because those are the golden pillars of success, says old people. <laughs> I believe everyone has their own unique formula. And if you can help them find their formula, that's what's going to help them shine as an individual. Absolutely. I I love it. I just, I mean, I'm blown away at how much you know, how much you're sharing. I mean, it's like, I mean, it's just a wow. <laughs> Cause I really didn't know much about you before I came out. That's, and that's kind of my, my thing is I don't even really do too much research on people when I get them on my show and I get to learn and get to ask questions and it kind of makes for a better conversation because I'm asking questions that probably don't usually get asked to the guests. So it's kind of fun. And, um, um, this has been so exciting. I mean, absolutely exciting. Is there anything you wanted to share here today about a book, a class, a course, or anything that you want to share with my audience and the world? Sure. I mean, pick, pick your poison. We've got lots of stuff. <laughs> pick pick, pick <laughs> um, anything. If you're in a transitionary period of your life, I'll tell you what we have for what people. If you're in a transitionary period of your life, so you're a young kid, just graduating school, um, about to enter the workforce, you're someone who's been in a, a job for 30 years of your life and you're transitioning to something new, uh, you're someone who's at the end of your career, you're transitioning to that magical travel retirement stage, if you're in any of those transitionary moments, uh, grab a copy of our book. Uh, chapter one is how to design your perfect day, just day-to-day -day living and simple living that makes you feel fulfilled, happy, healthy, alive. Um, chapters two through 12 is how to turn that day into reality based on my own experience, based on thousands of clients we've worked with all over the world and how to help them do that. And chapter, chapter 12 is how to then redefine your 5, 10, 20 year vision that can become kind of your north star for the next 20 years of your life to guide you. It's not so much a perfect plan as it is something out there that every day you can look up and go, oh, I'm still going in the right direction because that's where my vision's leading me, just like a north star would. And so that's the book that'll help transitionary people in those moments of life. Um, if you're someone who is in a stage of life that you're ready to give back and you're like, hey, I've done it. I've kicked ass, I've totally taken names, I've done everything I'm meant to do. I feel like either on the side or full time, I would love to help other people experience the juice of life. Uh, we have a brand new program called Performance Coach University we put together that, that's everything I've learned from basic psychology all the way through personal development mixed together specifically to help people perform at their absolute best. It's every tool I use in my personal coaching practice for the last 13 years to help entrepreneurs, executives, young kids, I mean, you name it, we've helped them, uh, all the way up to the you know, elite special forces of the Air Force. Like These are the same tools we use in all those situations to help them perform at their best. And so we've packaged that up. That's Performance Coach University. Um, if you're just trying to figure out how to set goals and kick ass at them, uh, if you go to our main website, we have another... Uh, program up there that you can grab. It's a 30 day program. Week one and two is how to set your goals, organize your plan and maximize your schedule every day. Weeks three and four is how to kick your ass into gear and, and really maximize your motivation. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a simple program, but it works. Yeah. Like put a plan together, kick ass at the plan. <laughs> um, and, and, and in all honesty, if, if you just want to check in with us like you do on this podcast and, and you like what you're hearing and stuff like this, join us on Facebook and hang out every day. Yep. Uh, we got a good crowd of people that come and hang out and, and capture those. And, and every day we try to just rattle off something awesome. Yeah. You know, I like, I like Jarek, what you're doing. I, I, I follow the same path as this. It's not about the numbers. It's about the quality and the one connection at a time. And I appreciate that. And, um, you know, everybody's trying to other podcasters. I see them commenting. I'm trying to get the big guests. I'm trying to get this huge, massive following. And, and of course, You'd love to have that, but I always tell them one guest at a time, one good guest at a time, one quality interview at a time. Doesn't matter who it is, if it's a good quality interview, then people will enjoy you and they'll appreciate you and so on and so forth. And I like that you're behind that 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 idea. That, that um, it's just it's it's welcoming and exciting. It's true. There's a lot of people distracted by numbers and money and stuff and accumulation. 
And, and it's very fascinating how that group has made their way into the personal development industry. And it, it's like their goal is how many clients can I send up? How many big ticket items can I sell? How many courses can I move? Right. And, and I always scratch my head and, and I think it's kind of funny because if their main goal is making money, they picked a really ridiculous niche to try to make money in. Yeah, right. <laughs> you realize a lot that of it would take you a year selling lots of courses yeah. to make a million bucks and yep. I could go sell 10 properties in Newport Coast and yeah. make over a million dollars in commission and all I have to sell is 10 units. Yeah, exactly. Like think of how less of a headache that is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good point, right? It's, it's so silly. Yeah. So I, I, I agree tenfold. Hopefully, um, you know, I remember at one point, and I'll tell you a simple story for people to get so caught up in the numbers. And I've been there. I've gotten caught up in it. I was so busy, you know, building my business in the beginning. And I was so excited. And I was in a position where I didn't have a whole ton of money. And, and I really focused on, you know, making money, growing a business. So I was 24 years old. I'm in the front end of a house trying to figure out how to make it. <laughs> and, and at the time, I worked really hard. I got up to 52 one-on-one -on -one coaching clients a month. Wow. Which for most coaches their jaw drops because it, it's not a smart idea. I learned after doing it. Um, you start to forget who's who and, and, and you can't deliver a high quality service at that scale. Um, but I thought I could change the world. So I was trying to get everybody. And, and I, I did make a lot of valuable differences in their lives and businesses, but I could have done better. And I know that just because there was too many. And, and so I had to figure out how to scale back. And um, there's a lot of people who talk about group coaching. That's the way to make a buck. And my thought is group coaching is awesome if you're teaching someone a skill. It's not awesome if you're actually trying to deliver for them. Um, you know, if you got, went to the Olympic Training Center in San Diego in Chula Vista there and you, you had the option to work with one on one with a coach to help improve your running and sprinting or to work as, in a 50 person group on that same stuff, yeah. you know, as well as I do, get one on one. Like they're going to look at your technique, your gait, your out of the out of the gate you know, position. They're going to look at your footage with you. They're going to watch your nutrition, your diet. They're going to know everything about you to get you to perform at your best. And I want to offer that to individuals, not 50 people at a time. And hopefully right. we get it right. Right. Um, right. Now, if we were teaching someone like, here's the five steps to fix a toilet, <laughs> scale it, put scale 50 it. people on a call. It's not that freaking <laughs> technically hard. <laughs> like you can only really mess that up in so many ways. I hope not. <laughs> <the way. laughs> uh, but, but that thought. So went down that row. And at one point, I remember I, my mom called me and I, we were talking on the phone and she goes, How's you, how are you doing? How's your business going? I'm like, oh, mom, we crushed our numbers this week. It was huge. I made more money this week than I've ever made in the last six months. It was awesome. Blah, blah, blah. And she said, you know what? I'm really disappointed in you. I was like, disappointed? I'm killing it. <laughs> and she's like, I'm really disappointed. She goes, why did you choose to get into this space in the first place? I said, to help people. She says, and everything you've told me for the past five minutes had nothing to do with helping people. She says, oh, don't get me wrong. I'm proud of you for all the quote unquote success you're achieving. But if you want real success, <laughs> where's the purpose behind it? You know, where's the real reason that's driving you as far as something that's going to far outlast you as an impact on this planet? Making money is easy. Anyone can make it anywhere, anytime. It's simple if, I mean, if you can make money juggling fire sticks on a boardwalk and trust me that ain't easy but if you can do it you can make money you know people can sing people can make jokes and make money you can do whatever you want to make money but if the profession you chose to get into is a helping profession the goal should be how many people you're helping and how consistently you're helping them and like you said one one person a day if i can get to one a day i'm winning this game and and coming back for all the people who choose to be in a helping profession hopefully my mom can throw a reminder out to you and it, you know, she sat down with you and asked you, how's your business going? Hopefully the conversation would be about the difference you're making in the people's lives around you versus how much you're trying to extract from them. Um, there's nothing wrong with making money. We make a lot of money. <laughs> uh, at the same time, the, the goal really truly is what, what difference can you make and how focused you're on on that. I, I know Sean, who's on earlier, one of your guests, I know him personally. The dude's passionate about making a difference in people's lives. Um, from I, I listened to a couple episodes before I hopped on here. I can hear it in your voice and, and how much energy and time you're putting. You're passionate about making that difference. And, and hopefully, I don't know who's listening, but if there's that one person listening who's been so pumped about their numbers and so crazy driven about their numbers over the last week, and you chose to be in a helping profession, hopefully some of this little wake-up call or shake and say, hey, focus on helping people. Everything else will take care of itself. 
you got to put the right habits and systems in place as far as business is concerned, but everything else will take care of itself if you really, really, truly make a valuable difference in people's lives. Awesome. Jarek Robbins, everybody here today on the five minute bark podcast. Um, I can't end with a better ending than that. Um, again, Jarek, thank you for your time for coming on here today. This is just, I'm chills. Got a little hair going up here. This is really amazing. Um, I'm sure my listeners will really, really appreciate your time as well. Um, it's been an amazing day here for us at the five minute bark podcast. And I hope it's gonna be an amazing day for you over there in Tampa, Florida. I know you're on your journey for two months now to go on the road and speak and do all kinds of amazing things for the world and for the people. Um, and I know you're not going to be counting your pennies. You're going to be counting the lives you save. So I like to hear that too. I don't know if I'm saving them, but hopefully I get through them <laughs> at a good moment of life and ignite a fire that hadn't been lit in a while. <laughs> That's true. So thank you again. And listeners, thank you out there for listening for today's podcast. Hey everybody learn from the best. I have now interviewed over 130 guests and what I've learned was mind boggling. So I've taken this, packaged it into a number of different courses to help you learn cutting edge techniques my guests took years to learn. We have over 10 courses available and these courses will reveal secrets on things like how to become a fearless public speaker, master social media, utilize YouTube, branding for your company, and a whole lot more. Each course includes a presentation along with expert advice from different guests from my show in an interview setting. I can promise you this, everybody. These courses are easily valued at over $300 each, and they're not a simple PDF download. So get your first free course here today at free.codydog.com and start expanding your mind, expanding your education, and get inspired. Hi, guys. Billy Joe Murphy. I just wanted to give a shout out to Dennis and say thank you. I recently got his public speaking course and it was just so amazing, so helpful, so helpful that I'm actually doing this video right now. Um, Dennis really presented the information with so much authenticity and so much vulnerability that actually made it feel doable um, and made it feel like you can do it yourself. So I just wanted to say thank you so much, Dennis. You're such an inspiration. Um, keep shining your light your bark is getting louder and wider and I love it Um, so here's to Dennis thank you so much and um, hope to be on your show someday soon Dennis thank you namaste and then I also started taking Dennis's course and I love the course there's so much good content in it one of my favorite sections that I recently completed was the speaking section the different modules on public speaking and I recently had a bunch of public speaking events lined up so watching those videos it really helped me get into state get confident and come up with some really good ideas to have a more effective presentation so I implemented the ideas I use utilized the ideas and I saw the results from using the ideas of the guest experts that he interviewed so I just can't thank Dennis enough I am so excited to see where my, how my interview evolves. Once you have that interview, you have it for life. You have the footage for life that you can put in a media kit, you can put on your social media, on your website, you can show people. So that is just amazing. And then the skills that I'm learning from the online course to manufacture my celebrity status, that is just invaluable.